Hello YouTube. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use the Weka Knowledge Flow Environment application to see the selected attributes by wrapper method. So if you do not know how wrapper method of attribute selection works, then you can go back to some of my tutorials where I explained how you can do that with Weka Explorer. But this is a user request where a user has requested to show the exact same thing with Weka Knowledge Flow Environment. So I'm going to start with Weka Knowledge Flow Environment. So as I open the Knowledge Flow Environment, at first I have to click the data source and I'll put the R floater on the layout. Second, I have to I have to put the class label assigner. So the class label assigner is on the evaluation tab. Class assigner is actually telling you which is, which of the attributes in your attribute list of the data set is going to be the class attribute. So we place that on the layout and then we will go to the filters tab and we will see the we will select the attribute selection and put that on the layout. Now visualization, we need to see what attributes have been selected. So we will go for a text viewer and put that on, onto the layout. So this is our primary setup. Now we have to put a link between those uh, selected items on the layout. We click on the R floater. We select the data set, connect it with the class assigner. We right click on the class assigner, we select the data set and put it to attribute selection. We right click on the attribute selection, select the data set and fit that to text viewer. So that's fairly easy. Now we have to configure the class assigner. So I'm going to right click on the class assigner and you can see this is a class assigner customizer. You go down, you can see the class column is set to last. That means the last attribute of my attribute list in the data set is going to be the class attribute. So at this moment I'm clicking OK, but I'll show them later why I put that to last. Now in the attribute selection, as I told, this is going to be a wrapper method. We are double clicking on the attribute selection icon here and we choose evaluator as the classifier subset eval. Best first is the default search and I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to click on the classifier subset eval option and you know that my favorite uh, classifier so far is because of its simplicity is the naive base. So I click on the base classifiers and select the naive base. Holdout file is going to be the default one, so I'm not going to change that. I click OK here and I click OK for filter options. Now I'm going back to the file I'm going to test with. This is the file I'm going to load in my R floater. It has 39 attributes and you can see that the last attribute is the class attribute. So that's why in the Weka Knowledge Flow environment on the class assigner, I have chosen the last as class column. So I click OK. So I'm going to select that R file. I right click on the R floater, select configure. I go to the place where I'm keeping my file. So this is the file I was talking about and it has been loaded. So now I right click and I click on start loading. You can always go back to down. You can see that everything has worked fine. So our floater, our floater is running for seven seconds. Our attribute selection is running for 10 seconds now. So it's okay. Um, we go to the top. Now everything is done for you. We right click on text viewer. We click on show results and you can see that out of 39 attributes, naive base performed with this subset of attributes the best. So we have six attributes selected by naive base uh, classifier with one class attribute. So this is the attribute list that has been provided to you by naive base. So in this way, you can also apply the filter method to find out uh, the attributes that have been selected from a list or pool of attributes. I hope that helps. Thank you very much for watching.